Hello and welcome back to another video from Pro Photo Vector. My name is Mike Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to create a newsprint or halftone effect using Affinity Photo. Here's the final composition we'll be creating for today's tutorial. So I'll start by opening up the original image and I can do that by opening up my file explorer. Here's the file I want to use. I'm going to click and drag this and because I already have a composition opened up in Affinity over here I have to drag it up top here above the composition and you should see loading document there. So here is the photo we'll be using. I'm gonna start by grabbing the crop tool and I'm just going to set this to a custom ratio for the crop and go 1920, hit the tab key, 1080. So I do just want to adjust the position of this so I'll click inside and then just drag it down and just hold the control and shift keys to drag it down in straight line mode. So once that's where I want it, I'll come over here and click apply. Next, we're going to apply the halftone filter to the image. There are two types of the halftone filter in Affinity Photo. There's the live filter, which is going to be the non-destructive method. That creates the filter on a separate layer, kind of like an adjustment layer. Or we can go with the destructive method, which is just going to apply the filter directly on top of the image. For this tutorial, I'll show you the non-destructive method. So what I'll do is go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, and we'll come over here to Colors and go with Halftone. So you'll see that will add this as a separate little adjustment layer. And here is the Live Halftone dialog. So by default, this isn't going to look great, and I'm not going to lie, I use GIMP a lot on my other channel, obviously, Davies Media Design. I do think GIMP has a better halftone filter. It's called Newsprint. But you do have plenty of other options here to adjust this. So for example, I can decrease the cell size and that's gonna make this look better, bring out some of those details. And the contrast here you'll see is going to add or remove contrast to the overall composition. You don't wanna to do too much because it starts to look a little funky. And you can change the screen angle here. Right now the dots are just going to be perfectly horizontal and vertical but you can put them on an angle, which creates some other cool effects. And right now the dots themselves are set to cosine, so you have two options here, cosine or round. Round is just gonna be more your traditional circles. Cosine is going to try to incorporate a bit more of the shading going on in the original image and not focus as much on creating perfect circles. Also, the circles kind of fade a bit there. So you'll see here with round, the circles don't really fade at all. So really, this is up to your preference. Either way, you can change the cell size, increase or decrease those circles. And you also have additional options here. So color is just going to perform the same effect, but it's going to use color circles here. So you can see red, magenta, yellow, some cyans in here, some black. So that's really more closer to a full color print. And if you come over here to the dots, once again, you have round or cosine. In this case, you can adjust the gray component replacement. So if you wanna replace the color gray throughout this, you can do so by sliding the slider here to the right, or you can bring it back in by sliding this to the left. And that pretty much replaces gray with black. And then if you wanna lighten up the original color of the image, you can increase the under color removal. That's pretty much all that does is it lightens it up. Right here, it's not really doing a great job or doing much of anything. So coming back to screen, we also have line. So instead of using dots, it's going to use lines to create that halftone effect. And we can increase the size of the lines, which is basically mostly just going to increase the gaps between the lines here, the white lines. So the smaller the lines, the more details you have there. And circular is going to be very similar to that, except it's going to use a circular pattern for the lines instead of obviously having straighter lines. And if I come back to line, you can also change the angle of this, of course. But let's come back here to monochrome, which I like the best. And we'll change this to cosine. And we'll adjust the cell size here like so. Of course, we can adjust the opacity of the effect here using the opacity slider if we want. You can see we can get some pretty cool effects from that if we do that. And we can adjust the blend mode as well. One thing I want to show you, if I come up here to the round option and we turn the opacity all the way up, if you come over to the blend mode and you change this to multiply, 
it's gonna get rid of the white. So basically with the round option for the dots, you have black and white. So if I go with multiply, it'll get rid of the white and now we just have black. And let's exit out of here. What I can also do is come over to the original layer and go to layer, new adjustment layer, and come over here to HSL. And now we can play around with the colors of the original image or the saturation. So for example, if I turn the saturation all the way down, that's gonna make the image black and white. And we can also adjust the luminosity here or the lightness pretty much. Or we can turn this up a bit and adjust the hue by shifting it. So obviously we can get some cool effects with that. The reason you would wanna do this method is that you may wanna keep more details from the original photo and just have that halftone overlay on the original image. So this method does allow you to keep more original details. Let me exit out of here. But because this is a non-destructive filter, we can always uncheck that HSL adjustment we just added, double click on the halftone effect and change this back to whatever we want. So let's come back here to normal, change this back to cosine, and let's say we just go with that option and exit out of there. And here's our final composition. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.